Hello, today is April 23rd, 2011. We're meeting today with Mr. James Clausen at his home in Loveland, Colorado. My name is Brad Hoops. I'm the interviewer for the Northern Colorado Veterans History Project. Welcome, Jim, and thanks for sitting down today to, to tell your story. Certainly. Let's start out, if we could. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your date of birth, where you were born, a little bit about your family. I was born November the 2nd, 1924, in Muncie, Indiana. I grew up on Wheeling Avenue in my grandmother's house during the Depression. We were not strapped as a family, and I didn't know there was a depression on until my mother got me a paper route in 1936. Then I discovered the facts of life rather rapidly. <clears throat> in, what, in what sense? Uh, what prompted well, I had, trying to collect uh, from... Uh... Some people that played games with me, my uh, paper collections were 15 cents a week. And boy, <laughs> some people pulled the darndest tricks to get out of paying that 15 cents. I had people move out of my, off of my route, and I would chase them. My father was a tiger. He was the CEO of the largest savings and loan in eastern Indiana. And he had had a lot of practice. And he had no problems uh, being in the banking business, no problems with the Depression? He wasn't... Uh, no. He made it I through that? As far as I knew, we ate well, yeah. we lived well, yeah, we always had a car, plenty of gas, and the Depression made very little um, impression on me yeah. because uh, of that and goodness. Okay. Did you have any brothers or sisters? I had one sister, five years older, and she was gorgeous. I was kind of a nerd, <laughs> and I was the odd younger brother. Uh -oh. She had boys running after her, and they kind of laughed when I showed up. <laughs> oh, well, that's life. Yeah, yeah. I, I learned to tolerate it even when I got into the Army. So now uh, you went through the school system there at Muncie and graduated in Muncie? Yes, and in Muncie Central High School. What year did you graduate? 1942. 42? Yeah. So now you were uh, a senior then that fall of uh, 41 when Pearl Harbor uh, oh, bombed. Oh, yes. Do you remember where you were and what you were oh, thinking? Oh, yes. When... We had a, a social club that about 20 kids belonged to. It was called the SAN Club. Sunday afternoon is when we met, and that's thus the initials. We were at one of my friend's houses dancing to records when uh, somebody had a radio on. Flash, Pearl Harbor has been bombed. Where the heck is Pearl Harbor? Yeah. I don't care. <laughs> Shut that thing off. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, we were just kids. Yeah, sure. And we were there to enjoy ourselves. And goodness, <laughs> I'll never forget it. Uh, but the guy that <laughs> was the uh, uh, supplier of the house finally uh, turned the music down, turned the radio up. And we sat on the floor, about 20 of us, mostly half girls, half boys. We uh, had paired up, and uh, we heard the announcement, and uh, we began to wonder, how's that going to affect us? Oh, right I don't know. Who cares? Uh, but we all cared about a year later. Sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you bet. Yeah. <laughs> So Pearl's bomb, and then you go through the, the spring and graduate uh, that spring in 40, 42. 42. What did you do then thereafter, uh, after you got out of high school? Um, I worked in a shoe store that summer, applied to Indiana University, got accepted because they didn't have very many students, and they were um, quite receptive to anybody that showed an interest. So uh, I went to Indiana, which was in Bloomington, Indiana, 110 miles straight south of our hometown. 
and uh, I spent one semester there. Uh, one point I want to make for this. Sure. I was 18 on November the 2nd. The following month, December, I got greetings from my draft board. Oh, boy. You are expected to report. And <laughs> I was dumbfounded. Gosh, that's quick. Yeah. A lot of my friends, of course, were going. Come, yeah. I was younger than most of my buddies in class. Right. One guy was younger than I, and I've forgotten what happened to him. He's since died, but he was in the service. Oh, but uh, we all were eventually. Yeah, right. E except one guy who intentionally perforated his eardrum and was not accepted through the physical. Oh, well, yeah. that's another story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I really never did blame him. Yeah, oh, uh, sure. He was ready to get married right out of high school. Gosh. <laughs> hmm. um, now I've lost my thought. Well, now, how soon after you got your notice from Uncle Sam did you have to ship oh, off then? Um, I uh, dropped a note to the draft board Please let me finish my first semester. And uh, my father luckily had some clout and he made some phone calls. And they allowed a deferment until Indiana University's first semester was over. And the first semester I, or first year? No, first semester. Oh, geez. Oh, oh yeah. It was, I was uh, inducted April the, four, uh, April the 8th. 1943, so I hadn't been home very long from uh, college, <laughs> and I went straight down to Fort Benjamin Harrison in Indianapolis and took the oath, <laughs> and I said, my gosh, what am I doing here? This is weird. I had had quite a, a life up to then. Yeah, right. I really had a happy childhood. And a happy time in college. I loved college. It was social, and I uh, got decent enough grades, so my folks didn't <laughs> didn't get <laughs> to the harassment point. So we really, I got along real well up until the beginning of the army. Yeah. <laughs> and that, then things changed. So I, you got inducted, and then where did you ship off to for your basic? Basic. I went to Greensboro, North Carolina. I'd never heard of it. And that's where I discovered country music, incidentally. Huh. Uh, I was walking down a street in Green, uh, Greensboro, and I passed a bar, and Roy Acuff was belting out a song, and I was uh, just so taken. I thought, gee, that's just great and people were out on the street listening and the bar was jammed of course being a, a, a home of an arm, army base uh, we were signal corps air air force really it was the air force at that point we had explained to us the first day we arrived uh, this is not the air corps boys you're in the air force really yeah, oh, interesting. and I don't know why they made such a distinction, yeah. but they did. Uh, but Greensboro was a pleasant town. Gee, the climate was so nice. And I finally looked it up on the map recently. It's in the northwest corner of the state. Winston-Salem isn't far and I had no idea. Yeah. I knew the basic or the uh, basketball teams that originated in North Carolina, but that's all I ever right, knew right. about North yeah. Carolina. Well, now I, tell me if this is a, the case with you. I know during your generation, growing up, a lot of people really never traveled too far away from home. Had you had you as a family traveled, or was this yes. the first time away from your family? Oh no, <laughs> my father uh, had as a hobby driving through the countrysides. We always had a, a nice car, and every year he would take two weeks vacation. He could have taken longer because yeah. he was the, the chief honcho, yeah. but, but he just took two weeks, and we 
I went everywhere as a youngster. Oh, Florida, is that right? um, West, a lot of time in Michigan. He loved Michigan. And we would uh, go to Ohio, and we never went much to the West Coast since. Annie and I have spent several trips yeah, sure. there yeah. in an RV, and ah. that made it interesting. But Dad loved to, dra to drive uh, in 19, oh well, 37, no, thir it was 37. His three brothers had all left Indiana and gone west, two in California and one in Washington State. We drove out to California uh, to uh, have a, a brother, con a sibling convention. <laughs> <laughs> and I was, let's see, 37, I was 12 years old. And I'll never forget driving through Colorado, uh, it was road 30 was the only road east and west that was decent through here then. And Dad said, Jimmy, come on up here and drive this thing. Give me a rest. I drove most of the way across Colorado. Is that right? And that's where I learned to handle a car. And I drove some in Nevada. And coming back, we went down through Arizona, Texas. And I did, I did a lot more driving than my sister. She wasn't the least bit interested. I'll be <laughs> and there. Mom was bored to death with it. <laughs> but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that trip. Oh, what and an that, adventure. That's an example of Dad's application of his hobby. <laughs> yeah, right, right. He had grown up in poverty, and boy, <laughs> he had done, done such a turnaround, I still have to admire him. Sure, yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so well, let's move ahead. Now you're down okay. at uh, uh, Carolina. How was that transition for you, going from civilian life into military life? I hated it. Oh, did <laughs> I, I did not fit in. Um, my folks had a, a, a pension uh, uh, against shots. I had never had a shot as a youngster. When they were uh, meeting out the uh, tetanus shots one afternoon, we lined up. And I said, what's this for? Get in line, soldier, and shut up. And I did. And I, was, I did what I was told. And when I got up there, they stuck that needle in my arm. I suddenly lost my perception of color. I thought I was going to pass out. And I said, hey, what did you shoot me with? None of your business. <laughs> and... <laughs> That was my first introduction to medical <laughs> huh. um, treatment. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'll be there. It was a tetanus yeah. line. Goodness, I suppose yeah. they'd had a, a, a scare in the camp. The camp was pretty good sized. I have no idea. I'd like to go back to Greensboro. I never have returned. Hmm. Just see where the camp was. Yeah, right. I've yeah. got a story uh, on beyond that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well. So uh, you went through basic in Greensboro, and then and then where uh, where did you go from there? Then what was your next to step? To Omaha, Nebraska, and I loved Omaha. Uh, there was very little service personnel nearby, and people in Omaha were so kind. They would stop me on the street and say, soldier, can we take you anywhere? I don't know where I would go, thanks anyhow. <laughs> and they would say, would you like to come out with us and have Sunday dinner? I said, oh no, I get plenty to eat here. <laughs> what on earth was the matter with me? <laughs> but uh, they were so kind, and I just thoroughly enjoyed Omaha. Now, were you sent there for schooling, or what was yes, Omaha all about? Yes, we had a signal school that lasted five months. Let's see. Boy, I can't tell you dates or That's fine. Months. No, that's yeah, fine. That's yeah. okay. Sure. Now, did, is that something you signed up for, or were you just no, assigned to, or how did no, you get into the signals? we were assigned. When we were lined up at Greensboro, um, one of the NCOs came out and said, Tink, what? And we all shut up and uh, came to attention. He said, 
there from this on this line the the front goes to signal school huh. the back goes to air for airplane maintenance school that's how we scientifically assign you okay dismissed ha. that's why i went to signal school i'll be darned in omaha <laughs> Now, what, what were you uh, taught at, at Signal School? What was uh, that all in? The uh, Morse code, uh, conduct on the radio, and that there was quite a, a protocol for a radio, and I applied that in Iceland later on. Okay. Uh -huh. I guess we'll get to that. Yeah. And yeah, uh, that Signal School, it was a bore. <laughs> oh, was it? Yeah. We stayed in a hotel. Uh, we were billeted there uh, on the river in Omaha, uh, the Rome Hotel, and <laughs> our quarters were really quite nice. The hotel had been converted, of course, yeah. but uh, it's like the cruise ship we took across the ocean. <laughs> it had been the Ile de France. Well, I'm yeah. getting ahead of you. Yeah, story. we'll get to that for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, before you, did you have a 30-day leave, any sort of leave to get home before you went out to Omaha on the way, or did you go directly from Greenboro oh, to Omaha? Oh, I went directly to Omaha. Okay. But in the meantime, my grandmother died, and I was shocked. And, uh, of course, I uh, went to my uh, commanding officer and said, Sir, I would like to have a pass. My grandma just passed, and I I loved her so. And uh, this is the one you lived lived with. Oh yes. yes, okay. In her house. All right. And uh, I think we did that as accommodation to her. Sure. And her husband. I never knew my grandfather. Hmm. He uh, decided to leave before I arrived, uh, but. Uh, um, <laughs> so were you given uh, given the pass to go home? Oh yes, oh, I was given a, a three day pass to get to Muncie. Was that enough time to get home and back? Uh, it was just barely. I hitchhiked through the mountains in North Carolina, got a ride in a a, a truck. The guy scared me to death. I think he was drunk, <laughs> and I got a ride all the way across to Ohio, and. Uh, somebody that delivered me in Muncie, Indiana, I think went out of their way to wow. accommodate me. Wow. And then I just turned around and hitchhiked back in three days, and we buried Grandma, and boy, <laughs> that was a, an emotional weekend. Oh, I'll bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> probably no sleep at oh, all. No. Yeah, Goodness. the emotions on top of it. Yeah. Oh, no, probably yeah. for three days. Yeah, right. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> So now we'll go ahead back. Uh, you're in Omaha. You go through signal school. Uh, take your story from signal school then. What's okay. completing signal school? After five months, uh, several of us were sent to Jefferson Barracks, St. Louis. That was overseas, um, what they call it, a pre-embarkment training. It was tough. We double-timed uh, for an hour before breakfast every morning in the dark and we were uh, assigned to go over obstacle courses and I don't think I was in ever uh, better physical shape than I was as a result of well, you, you mentioned earlier that you were a nerdy little kid. Oh, were you very yeah. active? Uh, I mean, as, as far as athletics and, and stuff as a little kid, I mean, or was this, so was this training hard for you well, at all? Uh, it wasn't terribly hard for me. I had lettered in tennis in high oh, school, okay. and I had uh, gotten some so exercise. So you're fairly physical. Our, uh, fairly, tennis coach yeah. okay. said, okay, 440 boys, around the track, and we did a lot of running. Oh, okay, and good. And so that kind of conditioned me for what was coming. <laughs> and the Army sure put us through a, a rigorous training program in St. Louis. Uh -huh. and. Then my experience uh, got a little funny. Uh, we were given physicals to uh, give us a the final send off for overseas. Um, two medical doctors were in the same room. One examined me. Hey, this guy's got a hernia, uh, and uh, 
the uh, other doctor said, let's see. And he examined me and he said, no, he doesn't. And they got into an argument right there. I think they had a kind of a, a personal vendetta of some kind. I didn't care. I just listened. <laughs> and I think the uh, one that won was the guy that said I had a hernia. I think he outranked the other guy. I didn't care, so uh, from St. Louis, I was sent directly to Tampa, Florida. Tampa was a, a signal uh, portion of the base. Drew Field was where we were, and that was on the west side of Tampa, uh, toward Tarpon Springs, and I loved that down there. Uh, so, so did that hernia diagnosis keep you away from going overseas initially? Yes, it oh, did. Okay. Yeah. I got separated from my group, and uh, they all went over to Europe just in time for the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, boy. And they were replacements. Uh, I met a guy uh, on my return to Greensboro after Florida, and he said, you know, so-and-so didn't make it. I said, you know, I don't want to hear that. Uh, let's talk about something else. I don't really want to know who's gone and who isn't yeah, yeah. and who got uh, maimed and right, yeah. in injured. Goodness, I was <laughs> already such a, an exception, and I was a, 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 the ultimate nerd in my exception because so many of the guys I served with had come from Africa, which must have just been awful. And I listened to stories, and I said, I don't want to hear any more. Oh, shut up. You haven't been out of the States yet. Huh. <laughs> um, so down in Tampa, then, was that for more schooling, or did you have an assignment oh, down there? No, they uh, put me through the hospital down there. Oh, okay. We were uh, assigned to the station hospital. I had a hernia almost um, hernia operation almost immediately okay. on arrival and I was bed fast for seven days now they get you up hours after the surgery but the uh, nurse I remember her so vividly she said now Clausen you're not to get out of that bed if you have to urinate holler don't mess the bed but you are not to get up. Hmm. And she made darn sure I didn't. Hmm. So I had a you know, kind of a, <laughs> a boring experience in the hospital. But after that, uh, we had a section of Drew Field that was the SAW section. That's Signal Aircraft Warning. <laughs> That's a term that I haven't heard since. But that's what we were. We uh, we were part of a uh, group that ran radar sites and uh, radio sites to aid the radar screen guys. And that's what I did in Iceland. But to get back to Florida, I had a weekend pass every weekend for seven months. I was in Florida for 11 months. I don't think they knew what to do with me. And I was uh, I was not upset because I was having a wonderful time. Uh -huh. And uh, <clears throat> I went over to St. Petersburg every weekend. I hitchhiked. It was no problem getting around. All a soldier had to do was stand out on the right. street. You didn't even have to put your thumb up. And people would stop and say, may we take you someplace? They were as kind there as they were in Omaha. Yeah. And I tell you, <laughs> I got spoiled rotten in Florida. Annie and I honeymooned in Florida after that. And I had quite a, a, a nostalgic return trip. Oh, wow. Because all my haunts were still there. Yeah. Or not all of them, but yeah. most of them. We stayed at a hotel in downtown St. Pete for 75 cents a night, I think it was. It was uh, especially designed for military personnel. You couldn't stay there unless you 
had a uniform uh, on and another was and, it a uso type place or just a oh i uh, i suppose there was a uso but i loved the beach so that uh, i just uh when uh, i was the only one that wanted to go i would go by myself um I, that's where i love to to uh appreciate shrimp and seafood mm. and she and I on our honeymoon <laughs> uh, restored that preference to you. <laughs> and my shrimp house was still there. Goodness. Huh. And that was years later. Yeah. Not really. That was 51. Oh, yeah. well. Yeah. 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 Not long. So what were your duties there in Tampa then? I didn't seem to have much. Oh, is that right? They didn't know what to do with me. I... Uh, MP'd for off and on. I don't think they uh, knew what to do with several of us. So they uh, assigned us to weekend MP's duty, and that was no fun. Yeah. But uh, to do it right, you had to be a grouch, and I tried to be one, but I was still kind of a nerdy kid, and... <laughs> People that I uh, would try to discipline would see right through me. Ah, oh, you get get out of here, move it. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't tolerate me. So that huh, I uh, got a little uh, a touch of maturity there. Uh, but um, let's see. After eleven months, I left Florida, went back to Greensboro. I think they literally. Oh, there were several of us. They didn't know what to do with Well, now, was the war over at this point? Oh, no. Oh. It was still raging. The Battle of the Bulge had was uh, uh, underway, and many of my buddies from Omaha were in that. Oh, okay. But uh, I didn't stay long at Greensboro. Then they shipped me to Camp Kilmer in New Jersey. New Jersey and... I was told that 10,000 GIs were on the Ile de France uh, to go overseas to Europe. <laughs> and, uh, well, that was no fun. The seas were rough. Yeah, how, I, that's one question I always like to ask. Here's a, here's a, land, a boy from Landlock, Indiana, oh, yeah. going out to sea. How, were, how was it for you as far as your sea legs and such? I never got sick. Oh, really? Huh? But I had a lot of friends on the boat that did. A boat. The ship said, don't call this a boat. The uh, Navy would get upset with us GIs. This is a ship, you guys. A ship. S-H-I-P. <laughs> Spell it. <laughs> and they were kind of adamant. But uh, many guys couldn't even go through the chow line. Food just nauseated them. I would uh, go through the chow line and have a great time. I would go through a couple of times on occasion yeah. when I felt like it. And gee, that was nice. <laughs> well, with, and uh, with that many men on the ship, what were conditions like? Your sleeping quarters and oh, we describe, were describe what these like. in, yeah. in in the bunks. Oh, uh, Morton Downey was on the boat. Is that he right? entertained us. I'll never forget that. He sat at a piano and had such talent, and I'll never forget that. Gee, that was a thrill to hear Mort Downey yeah. whenever you wanted to. You could, and he would uh, be in the lounge. It was a lounge. Yeah, it looked like our gymnasium at home in the high school. <laughs> <laughs> but it was huge. Now, did, did, did you go over in a car uh, convoy, or were you solo, the ship? We were. <laughs> I didn't get out oh, much. They yeah. didn't want us out. Yeah. Um, I really don't know. Was uh, there any worry at that point as far as G German U-boats or any, any concern about that? That came later. We got to Glasgow, Scotland, and most of the ship unloaded. But they didn't leave. They just left us alone, several of us, in one area. And I thought, my gosh, now what? Uh, so they gave us a shore pass. I went to shore, and that's where I encountered 
the Salvation Army. They had a donut, donut and coffee line on shore. And the guys were gathered around that place. Uh, it was such an attraction and the people were just superb. And one guy said, you know, I just came from the Red Cross. I'm never going back over there. That's no um, criticism of the Red Cross. I didn't know uh, even what the Red Cross was at that time. And I was 19, I think. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, so we were at Glasgow for three days and were loaded on a different ship, just a few of us. Maybe six. With, with no idea where you're going. Huh? Oh, I had no idea. Is that no. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we um, got on this ship. We were told that it was a converted Spanish um, cruise ship. That's what they call them. They called them something else then. But it was an ex cruise ship. And it was outfitted for GIs bunk beds in the hold and <laughs> just like the uh, old day France was and uh, we got out on the second day and the boat was dipping and turning and uh, at in the evening oh excuse me oh, let me put my feet up goodness that's <laughs> um, we were out on the deck we were allowed to circulate and uh, one evening when it was just getting dusk, uh, there were, oh, I think all half a dozen of us were up there. And a sailor from the ship came by and said, I don't want to catch any of you guys lighting a cigarette. Do you hear? And he said, the first guy that does overboard. And he scared the daylights out of us. We were all youngsters and he was older. And, you know, we respected age at that point. Uh, but uh, uh, somebody said, hey, where are we going? And he said, don't you know? He said, no, you're headed for Iceland. <laughs> All of you, you'll love it up there. It's de a destination resort. <laughs> and he, he turned on his heel <laughs> and was still giggling. When we said, Iceland? Where the heck is that? It's in the North Atlantic. Oh, okay. And uh, so about uh, the fourth day, we arrived in Reykjavik, Iceland. There it was in all its glory. And uh, we I spent 15 months in Iceland. Well, talk about the extremes. Tampa, Bay, Tampa Florida oh, to yeah. Iceland. Oh, yeah. Oh, gosh. Oh. Yeah, that is a... a Study in contrast. Yeah. I told the guys, of course, they didn't care. They were from all over the country. Uh -huh. But uh, we were um, replacements for guys who had had enough service in Iceland that were allowed to go home. And I was uh, assigned uh, to a camp in a crater of a volcano up there just out of Grindavik, Iceland. It was 900 feet in the air, I was told. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, well, as soon as I got there, they said, okay, you, you're on the radio. Go and learn about it. So I went and I visited with the guy that I was replacing. And my job was to convey a... Uh, radar screen reading, should there be one, of a foreign uh, object on the screen to radio uh, control or to a fighter base control, which was about 30 miles from us. And uh, <clears throat> I, I never used the Morris code while I was up there in Is 15 right? months. Uh, they uh, figured the security was not uh, compromised with the radio. So I did all my communicating on the radio following the, the protocol, of course. Uh, you had to go through steps, but 
Uh, we didn't get very many foreign readings. When we did, everybody get excited. <laughs> oh my gosh. And we swept the skies. The, the uh, Americans swept the skies. The Brits swept the seas. And we divided up that way. And the uh, Brits uh, did a good job on the seas. Once in a while, they'd pick up a submarine and they'd get all excited. I watched them on those occasions in Reykjavik Harbor. <laughs> Occasionally, we'd get back to Reykjavik. Yeah, how far out away from Reykjavik were you? We were 35 miles, as I remember. I've got a map over there um, that, from Reykjavik. And it was oh, pretty much like any American city. Uh, there appeared to be most people speaking English. Of course, they would speak Icelandic when they were amongst themselves. But um, Reykjavik at the time was not a big city. I was told the entire island had 25,000. I don't know if that's true or not. It's, uh, I was reading recently in a paper that it's about 150,000 now uh, due to immigration and uh, m um, multiplication amongst the, the uh, natives. Mostly Norwegians. Um, many, not many, but once in a while one would stop me and say, did I hear your name was Clausen? Yeah. Okay, are you Norwegian? Heck, I don't know. Nobody in our family ever had the nerve to look it up. <laughs> uh, my dad always said, I'm not looking up our family tree. I'm liable to find too many skeletons. And he'd just roar. He never wanted to. My uncle in Washington State uh, looked us up, and uh, he got a an elaborate um, coat of arms from Scotland. Somebody had scammed him. My dad <laughs> uh, finally deci decided. <clears throat> then uh, somebody in Ohio, uh, a few years after that, did a family history and decided we were Danish. Okay, uh, Denmark ruled Iceland until okay, yeah, the beginning right. of World War II. And then they went back to Europe. And Denmark was overrun, as you know, right. by the Nazis. And uh, oh, I met one or two up there who had stayed, and they were mad as hops at the Germans. But I had people on the street one guy stopped me and he said, you know, why don't you Americans just go home? We like the Germans better than you. I said, oh, really? Then I went back to the camp and asked some of the old timers, uh, did the Germans occupy Iceland? And they said, yeah, for a time, uh, just prior to World War II. Oh. I don't know. Well, be darned. Yeah. I, yeah, that's a puzzle. I've yeah. never been able to document that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, those Icelanders were individualists. Yeah, yeah. They were fishermen for the most part. Grindavik was a little fishing town down on the coast. We sat up in the crater of a volcano with our knees and huts and our yeah, radar. Talk a little bit about uh, the camp setup. What, what were uh, living conditions like and, and uh, your accommodations, your food? and knees and huts. What, what, now, what is the Neeson hut? That's a round uh, the, the Quonset? building. The yes. okay. Oh, Quonset hut, yeah. sure. <laughs> we call them Neeson huts up there. Yeah, okay. And the kitchen was our gathering place. Uh, how how guys, big of a camp? How many personnel, roughly? 30. There Just 30? 30 of us up there, yes. And we didn't get out much mm. um, occasionally. We had a, a camp jeep that you had to reserve in advance. And as far as I know, I never saw the commanding officer. He was uh, oh, uh, kind of a misfit, I was told. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, he never came out. 
Hmm. Oh, well, that's okay with me. Yeah. I was getting along fine. I would uh, um, tinker with the radio, which was not allowed in the Army at the time. You guys will stay on your station. I would flip to the BBC and listen to the news, listen to Berlin Sally. Oh, wow. Why don't you Americans give up, she would say. Uh, we outnumber you. We outgun you. We can outfight you. And, oh, boy, I don't know who she was, but I think it turned out she was a New Yorker. Huh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, it's kind of yeah. like a Tokyo Rose. That yeah, was right. the equivalent. Right, exactly, yeah. yeah. Okay. So were, you, uh, were conditions pretty comfortable for you as far as living oh, conditions? Yeah. Are? We yeah. had uh, the uh, Quonset hats were comfortable. We're warm. Uh, Iceland was not a severe climate. Oh. The only thing that I remember uh, outstanding from Iceland was the wind. And, of course, we were up in a, a, a higher elevation where the wind would be more uh, noticeable. And uh, I was, uh, let's see, one of the guys in the uh, camp said, you know, I was just in town today, and uh, one of the Icelanders stopped me, and he said, hey, you guys, are you uh, getting along all right up there in the hole? Yeah, I guess so. And uh, he said, well, you're in a volcano, you know. It erupted last time in the late 1800s. You're overdue. Oh. And <laughs> he just went off and roared, and this worried all of us. Yeah. Uh, but we never had any tremors. Huh. But uh, as you know, Iceland has a reputation of having disgruntled Volcanoes. Yeah, right, right. One just recently. Right, I right. have no idea where that one was. Mm. I saw it on the map, but we didn't get around Iceland very much. Mm. I was I, never at the air base. Is that, that right? Responded to our radio calls. No. Oh, well, when we left, yeah. I was. Well, oh, sure. Yeah. sure yeah. yeah, but. But. Uh, well, what would you. It, it must have been. It must have had a. An isolated, I mean, it must have been truly isolated up there. Oh, did, yeah. Oh, goodness. Did that play, uh, play on you at all? And, and what about, uh, you know, the, the uh, it was a 24-hour darkness in the wintertime, 24-hour sunlight in the Oh, summer. yeah. How did that play on you? <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. At 2 o'clock in the morning, it's bright. Oh, yeah. Uh, that is weird at, at Iceland, and it is true. But uh, that was offset by the... Aurora Borealis, which was gorgeous. I've never seen a, a uh, sight that was as gorgeous as the Aurora hmm. Borealis. Jeez, and it just played like an organ. Oh, goodness. That was, yeah, we would sit out in the snow and watch that. It just occurred in the wintertime, I think. I'm not sure about that. And they still... There's a dispute what causes the uh, borealis. Oh, well. Yeah, yeah. That was one of the attractions. Well, what else would you guys do for entertainment when you went on duty with such as... Oh, gosh. Uh, some of them read a lot. Uh, I was a uh, music lover, and uh, we... One of... Oh, Smitty the Cook had built a handmade guitar. And he said, Jim, why don't you learn this thing? I said, okay, show me, Smitty. And he he taught me the basics of a guitar. Huh. <laughs> um, I came back here and I was telling my dad about that. And he went immediately went down, bought me a guitar. Here, let's hear it. <laughs> Is that right? Huh. <laughs> yeah. huh. So I, I got my... Uh, <laughs> my claim to verify it. <laughs> okay, well. Do, do you still play it to this day? Is no, no. I, I quit, but I did for years. Huh. I had a, a cheapo here for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, I can't think what else. Well, once in a while, when we would put a requisition in for the Jeep, 
I've got some pictures over there of our Jeep runs. Whenever we left our campsite, which was called Camp Vale, incidentally, <laughs> which was appropriate. <laughs> it's spelled the same way as the Vale yes, Colorado? Yeah. I'm sure that's why it was called Camp Vale. Um, when we uh, would get the Jeep, the areas that we drove to were a lot of lakes in Iceland and a lot of mountains, but it was depressing. Yeah. And none of us really enjoyed it. The uh, horses were about the size of big dogs. They were ponies. They were just real small. Iceland has very few trees. No shrubs, no greenery, a lot of lava rock, of course. Uh, the uh, volcanoes had made sure there was no greenery left. Hmm. Uh, yeah, so we, uh, I really never uh, particularly opted for those trips, but once in a while I would go and... Uh, nah. now, how often would you get into the big city, Reykjavik? I mean, how often were you able to get get away from camp and get back to civilization, if you will? Oh, maybe a couple of times a month, if you wished. Uh, there was a uh, um, US, USO? Yeah. Can't, or, uh, yeah. Oh, no, that's not what they were called. It was uh, the Red Cross, basically. Oh, okay. <clears throat> and they had services there for servicemen, but I never thought those people were very cordial to us, and hmm. I didn't care. Of course, by that time, we were pretty disgruntled. Uh, by the time you sit in a hole of a volcano yeah. for a month with 30 guys, they all get boring. And oh, sure. You know everything they're willing to tell you yeah. and never forget it. And oh, wow. Well. Oh, wow. Uh, um, and you talked about uh, the chef, the cook, Schmitty. How was the food? What kind of... Oh, we had a lot of spam. Smitty was, uh, oh yeah, he, he was hard up for food. Of course, supply trucks were reluctant to come up, and once in a while we'd get a load of supplies. You would think we would have had a lot of fish, but we didn't. Hmm. And That's what I was me. going to say. Uh, I said, well, did you have a lot of cod? Because I love the Icelandic cod. Yeah. No, they never had cod. Never served? <laughs> no. huh. Oh, I think he did occasionally. <clears throat> but it was a, a matter of celebration when we did. Oh, not spam tonight? Oh, great. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Wow. A lot of canned stuff. Boy, I don't know how. I mean, those conditions just sound awful. Oh, Distressed. That, dist yeah, it was no fun. Huh. Then when VA occurred... I was delighted to be transferred. They closed oh, Vail. Oh, VE Day? Did you... uh, on VE Day, yes. I was transferred to Camp Howard, which was near Keflavik. I'll show you on that on the map. And it was much more pleasant. But the Icelanders in Keflavik were not very kind. They, uh, they didn't like us, obviously. And uh, we uh, didn't go out of our way to be kind to them either. Yeah. We were right next door to a group of English uh, in a camp. I don't know what that... It wasn't a radar camp, but uh, we called them the Limeys. Uh, once, about once a month, we said, bring your ale and come on over. You can have Rupert beer all you want. That's all the beer we ever had in Iceland. And Rupert Beer, it was from New York, and they thought it was just wonderful. Huh. And their ale was really pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So we did a willing swap, a swap with those guys. And uh, I got oh, fairly well acquainted with a couple of them. Uh, one said to me, as the last time I saw him, Clausen, I'm going to be knocking at your door. And where was it? Indiana? Where the heck is that? He said, I'm going to uh, leave England. It's no, there's no future in England, he said. 
So I'll be knocking on your door. And I gave him my address. He never did. Huh. I just wondered what happened to him. Oh, he God. was from London, from a, a poor section of London. He said he admitted, and uh, he was <laughs> poor guy. Um, I enjoyed those English. They were they were interesting people. Uh, some of them were quite well read. Where we left off, you were talking about the British and how they were well read and oh, how yeah. you enjoyed the they company. They were so pleasant. Yeah. And they thought we were all a bunch of hoodlums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, really, I didn't think they admired Americans Is very right? much. Huh. They have a kind of a a, a poor opinion of us in England, I guess. I don't know. I'll be doing. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, but these guys were from all over London. A couple from North London, which was more prosperous, and those guys were just a delight. Yeah. I enjoyed visiting oh, with them. So now, when you moved down to that other camp, were you doing the same same sort of work? They or? didn't know what to do with oh, us. Okay. Yeah, we were just. Footloose. Uh, we had a lot of books, a lot of recreation, music. We could uh, get passes about any time. There was, I'm trying to remember how we got around Iceland when we couldn't get a Jeep. I think there was bus service, but I'm not clear on that. It's been too too long ago. Yeah, sure. Generally, how was the, what was the weather like in Iceland? Uh, it was, uh, uh, one guy I remember said, you know, this is just like Pennsylvania. It never gets any colder, any warmer, any better. <laughs> and it rains a lot. And it did. And it blew a lot. And this, I don't know where he was, where he was from in Pennsylvania. But he said, uh, this just compares. Iceland wasn't bad. There was a lot of snow on the mountain. I'll show you some yeah. Quonset Hut with a lot of snow on them. But, uh, <laughs> I don't know how, we, how you guys manage but between the weather, uh, the, the bland food, the spam, oh, uh, yeah. the, the isolation. How you guys it, kept, it uh, kept saying. You. Yeah. you had to have pretty good grounding in your principles. Wow. Oh, goodness. How, how was it as far as uh, communications uh, from home, that, for example, mail well, and such? Oh, we got mail uh, quite frequently. My folks wrote regularly, and I, of course, returned. So I did have a lot of um, written communications from them. Um, yeah, and I enjoyed that. Of course, everybody... Look forward to mail call. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Now, were, were your letters subject to censorship like they were in, in Europe? Uh, you know, I don't know. I expect they were, yeah. but I don't really know. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then when we went to Camp Howard, it was quite a lot larger, yeah. and I expect uh, there was more stringent controls there. Oh, okay. Did it keep us Americans quiet? to keep us from irritating the natives. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how long did you spend at Camp Not Howard? Not long. Yeah. Then I was uh, tagged to go to the post hospital. Oh, what am I going there for? Well, the switchboard guy has to go back. He's uh, getting returned to the States, so we need somebody who can run a switchboard. I had never run one, but I sure learned quickly. Oh, uh, I ran the hospital, switchboard, communication center, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and I really kind of enjoyed that because I uh, had a lot of contact uh, with people. And when I would meet them, they'd say, oh, you're the operator, okay. Uh, how you doing, operator? Well, uh, no better than ever. <laughs> and uh, but it was fun, really. Uh, that kept me occupied, and really kept me out of trouble. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we were then uh, we were assigned a number, and your uh, departure was based on your number. 
And when my number came up, of course, I was delighted to go back home. So was that was your number tied in any way to the to the point system? I mean, was there a number of amount of time you spent there? I mean, how how was the order set for? I don't know really how they arrived at it. I think it was your term in Iceland, your grade, your okay. uh, evaluation. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> a number of things. I I was led to believe it was quite scientific. Knowing the army, I'm sure it was. Just, uh, yeah, okay, you go, you stay. <laughs> it's like the guy that separated us right. from the air mechanic school. Right, right. <laughs> so you, uh, your number comes up and you're, you're ready to ship home. Yeah, then. that's right. We yeah. got on a uh, transport plane at Meeks Air Force Base. That's the one time, and I was not impressed. I thought, gee, that's probably a nice airfield. But it was just like the rest of Iceland. Is that right? It was barren and wasn't the least bit attractive. <laughs> huh. But I was glad to, to get on that plane. And we flew home. Uh, we stopped at Goose Bay, Labrador. And uh, I was visiting with my neighbor who is do three doors east of here. And he said, I was stationed in Goose Bay. Is that and right? I said, my gosh, it's a wonder you still got all your hair. You didn't pull it all out. When I got, or when the plane landed in Goose Bay, I never saw so much snow in all my life, anywhere. What, what time of year roughly was that when you went through Goose Bay? I uh, see, I was discharged in March, so it was. it had to have been early March or late February. February. Oh, boy. And oh goodness, uh, they had to plow it. He said every day, and he was—he's considerably younger than I am. Everybody is, of course, but uh, he said, eh, "Goose Bay wasn't bad." I said, "Boy, I didn't look see anything that looked good to me." And he said, "Well, you can take that attitude. When we were there, we just decided to enjoy it." And he's kind of that way. <laughs> uh, so it was even it was even worse than Iceland then. Oh, I mean, good. If you to complain oh, about yes. oh. Goose Bay, it must have been awful compared to what you had left. Oh yeah, it was awful. Huh. The buildings were all covered, and there were just holes to get into the uh, doors, and the runways were plowed, and the snow was fifteen feet, I swear, on both sides. It had to have been. Huh. Good. Then we flew to Springfield, Massachusetts. And of course, when we landed and we all got out, we uh, a lot of us kissed the ground. Well, the good old USA. Um, from there on, I got the telegram. I sent my folks that I was coming, be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't know that I was on my way, I don't think. Huh. I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. I was a well, kind of a, a, a nerdy kid who didn't have too good a manners, and my folks were surely not responsible for that <laughs> because they were real proper and respectable people. But yeah. goodness. Oh, well. Yeah. So then, then from, from Springfield, then you went on home yes, back to Muncie? Yes. If it hadn't been for trains, I wouldn't have gone anywhere. Uh, I learned to love trains. I miss them now. Is that right? Oh, yeah. I wish we could. Uh, at one point, Annie and I caught a train with our three kids, went to California, down to Los Angeles, back through Las Vegas, all on a train, oh. and uh, our travel agent in Muncie, Indiana, made the arrangements for us, and uh, that was a trip none of the kids or he, she or I will ever forget. Oh, so it it was wonderful. Uh. We all enjoyed it so. Disneyland, uh, yeah, we've been since been to Disney World. Yeah, I have to yeah. think which is which. But uh, Disneyland was wonderful. We, uh, but I never saw so many cars in all my life. Yeah. 
the freeways in Los Angeles were a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how we got around, but we did. Yeah. Yeah. My oldest boy was a lot of help. He uh, helped me with the luggage. Uh, I think he was probably a late teenager. Oh, goodness. Yeah. yeah. And so we really, uh, trains are wonderful uh, transportation. Wow. I just wish they would return. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm ready to give up automobiles. <laughs> now, when you got, uh, after uh, you flew home and got back to Muncie, were you discharged or were you still, uh, was there any, any thought of uh, you being transferred to the, was the war still going on in the Pacific, oh, I guess? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, it was still full blast. Well, um, no, the war in the Pacific had ended shortly after VE Day. I forget well, it was three months. Yeah, May uh, for VE Day and then August or yeah. September for, uh, yes. for VJ Day. Yeah, so My uh, number didn't come up until after Christmas up in Iceland to uh, come back home. Oh, oh, so and after, uh, so uh, Christmas of 45? Yes. Oh, okay, right. okay, so all right. So yeah, the both fronts I were... I was discharged on March the 15th at 2.30 in the afternoon at Camp Atterbury, Indiana. And boy, I was ready to... Of uh, 1946. Oh, yeah, okay. 46. Okay, gotcha, okay, all right. in the service from 43, uh, April the 8th to March the 15th. Just short of three and, years. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, boy, it was funny. When we all got back on the GI Bill, of course, that drew a lot of guys to the campuses. Indiana was just overrun with GIs. You never saw so many GI boots on campus. And <laughs> the girls uh, just shook their heads. They were all youngsters, of course. Yeah. And many of us were much older. Right. One of the guys in my crowd, oh, in my fraternity, my cousin had been a member of a fraternity at Indiana, and he got me in. He's, I think he just called the president and said, Jim Clausen is coming down there. You take him in the fraternity, you hear? <laughs> I, about what happened. And he became an attorney in Gary, Indiana, and was a good one. But he's been gone several years. But I have him to thank for my housing in Bloomington, Indiana. I Because uh, like you said, there were so many GIs back, there was a housing shortage as well. Oh, yeah. oh shortage, yeah. My gosh, there were trailers even being hauled to Bloomington to hold students. Goodness, and the college just about lost their minds. They couldn't find housing for everybody. Hmm. And of course, they loved the GI Bill. We, their education was underwritten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's get them. Well, so then how long after you got back, uh, after you were discharged, then did you continue on to college? Did you have okay. to sit out that uh, uh, that spring and start in the fall, or how did you? That uh, spring, uh, my dad said, you know, Jim, uh, I remember you were a pretty decent painter. Can you still paint? I said, heck and yeah, sure. Okay, well... Paint the house, would you please? It was a Cape Cod two-story high. I had to stand on the top rung to get the top cables, uh, gables. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I got it done. And on the middle of June, I went to Bloomington and got in school just like that. And uh, went for from June to... Uh, January of 49, I was on the GI Bill, full full dole. Oh boy, that was wonderful. Yeah. And my dad was delighted. Oh, wonderful. But bless his heart, after uh, mom and I got married, mom, Ann and I got married, uh, he staked us to all the furniture in a house that her father had built. We were just spoiled. Rotten. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, did you? Uh, how did you talk a little bit about how you met Anne? And did you meet her in college or from Muncie? Or talk she about? Was, she didn't live that far from me, uh, in Muncie. 
Um, but I met her at a New Year's Eve party. She had a date with one of my best friends uh, who had been in Fort Benning, had begun, uh, had been a sub, had a, a uh, first lieutenant in the infantry. I said, Bob, for heaven's sake, what were you doing in the infantry? And he said, well, I didn't have any choice. <laughs> but uh, uh, when we went to a party at a friend's house in a basement that had been turned into a rec room for us guys who were returning from the Great Wars, <laughs> um, the father in that family was a dentist and a successful one. He was my childhood dentist, yeah. his father was, and we had a great time in that basement. Yeah. But I thought, gee whiz, Bob's date is cute as can be. <laughs> and I called Bob the next day and I said, do you mind if I call Ann for a date? He said, oh no, be my guest. Yes, that right. Go ahead. So I had at it and it uh, didn't take a whole lot of time to get her convinced that she ought to spend her rest of her life with me. Oh wow! Oh wonderful! <laughs> wonderful! Yeah. Oh. So how was that? Uh, uh, the sister question to the one I asked you earlier. How was that transition for you, going from the military and that time in Iceland back to civilian life? Was there much of a? I didn't have any trouble probably. adjusting. <laughs> yeah. Not at all. Yeah. I had access to a car. My folks were still car crazy. And we had a nice house. And uh, most of, well, not, yeah, I would have to say most of my friends returned. And we had a social group. Um, after the army, all of us got out about the same time because we were all, I was the yeah. youngest in right. the bunch, right. since the uh, guy that was younger than I had died early. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well. He's not in the war, though. Mm. I, I don't know what. Uh, oh, well. Uh, yeah, we had a, a great period. Of was, was, it, was it tough, though, going from, from that, all that isolation for, that, for so long back to... I guess, for a better word, civilization. I didn't have any trouble yeah, okay. adjusting yeah, okay. at all. Yeah. When I got back down to Indiana University, that was the highlight of my life. Yeah, I oh, loved wonderful. Indiana yeah. University. It was more fun. I enjoyed my courses. What I did was, you get your degree in? Uh, marketing Business Administration. I was an account accounting major to begin with, and uh, when I got to cost accounting, I said, okay, that's it, I'm changing a major, and I went into my counselor, and I said, you know, you've got to get out of this, got to get me out of this accounting major, and he said, okay, take your choice, I said, how about marketing, <laughs> I have a roommate that's taking marketing, he said, okay, that's fine, we'll sign you up, so... Uh, they were uh, willing to accommodate you anything you wanted because the university was having such a heyday with the GI oh, Bill. Sure. Yeah. They wanted us to stay. Yeah. You yeah. guys stay. Get um, post degrees. Uh, oh boy, they were wild. Yeah. So oh, you graduated in 49, you said? 49. Okay. Uh, the uh, end of the first semester okay. in February. <laughs> Oh, then, goodness, um, I noticed a uh, piece in the paper, uh, salesman wanted, and I was going to be the world's greatest salesman, you know, uh, Ball Corp, have you heard of Ball Corp? They're in Bloomfield at the moment. They were headquartered in Muncie uh, from the late 1800s until just oh, the last 10 years. Then they uh, sold the bowl jar division, the, the uh, fruit jars. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah. 
It's that family. Okay. Uh, they were the the uh, patriarchs of M Muncie, and they supported the college there, Ball State. Oh. Uh, all I have to uh, do to locate Muncie for people is, well, you've heard of Ball State. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, people that we uh, come across over at the Sculpture Park. Everybody knows Ball yeah. State, oh. so I'm... I'm just going to stop mentioning Muncie. Who cares? <laughs> Ball State was nearby. Annie and I lived near Ball State. And uh, we uh, got their cultural programs um, well in mind. And we attended a lot while oh, we wonderful. were still there. So you took that, you interviewed and got that job oh, from yeah, that ad? I did, ad? yes. Yeah. They uh, furnished us, five of us, with company cars of all things. And uh, oh, they uh, had a sales manager, I think, who was in danger of being separated from the company. I don't know what that was all about, but he uh, was especially interested in us guys being successful to, of course, help his sure. career. Yeah. I think it all did not turn out well, but I enjoyed it because that was uh, kind of a vacation for me. Um, after I had worked hard in college and I had enjoyed it and I had enjoyed the social life, but uh, the uh, traveling I uh, particularly enjoyed because we were set out separately. We uh, traveled Alabama, Georgia, North, South Carolina, uh, then Iowa, of all places. <laughs> yeah. did, did you have a territory, or were you just sent wherever? Oh, no, we were just sent huh? uh, at random, hmm. I think, just where the guys or the uh, supervisors wanted us to go. Uh, so, let's see, um, I did that until the fall, and I had a good time with Ball. I certainly enjoyed them, but we did not serve their needs well at all. We were calling on wholesale houses, and I learned a little about marketing from experience. It was a, a good training, but uh, uh, they called us back in September and said, okay, we're uh, going to dissolve the program, boys. Give your cars back. Sorry. Uh, good luck. The uh, Ball family, I knew some of them. Uh, one of the uh, second generation was a good friend of my brother-in-law's who had been in the infantry in New Guinea hmm. <laughs> and Australia, and he had quite a service experience. Hmm. But... Uh, this uh, uh, guy from Ball Corp, who had a lot of clout, was, um, oh, let me back up. I had a paper route during the Depression. Mm -hmm. On my paper route was two bankers. One became president of one of the downtown banks. The other one became executive vice president. I had that paper route for four years. And I got acquainted with everybody, of course. Oh, you're a Clausen boy. Oh, I know your father. Of course, he didn't know anybody by name, but he knew half the town yeah. by sight. Right. So, yeah, uh, he had a great personality. Mm. Gee, I wish I had been like him. <laughs> but... <laughs> um, when I got out of Ball Corp, uh, the uh, good friend of my brother-in-law's was on the bank board as well as Ball Corp's president, whom I met subsequently, who was a great guy, and uh, several of the family. The Balls had a heavy interest in our, our bank, I'm going to call it, because uh, I was stopped on the street one day and said, Okay, Jim. Uh, the, he was uh, 
He said, I'm president of the trust company now. Are you ready to come to work? I said, well, let me think about it. He said, okay, when you feel like it, come to the bank. Let us get your uh, interview on paper. And you can either visit with Howard or I. And I think maybe I had, I had uh, conducted myself well enough on the paper route that they were willing to sure. hire me. Yeah. So I got hired on the spot. When I went in, they said, oh, well, here's Jim Clausen. Good, good to see you, Jim. Several of them I knew, uh, they had, several of them had gone to our church. I was reared in the first Presbyterian in Muncie. And, <laughs> oh, I knew a lot of them and it didn't hurt. Yeah, sure. And so I started as a teller and I did that for a while and went through all the stages and I finally ended up opening two branch banks and being the chief honcho in both for about 10 years each. And I enjoyed that. So how long combined were you in the banking industry then? 30 years. Wow. <laughs> yeah. My training period and my after branch period kind of drew my career together and uh, after I, uh, I, oh yes, the uh, mortgage loan guy who was also on my paper route, incidentally, <laughs> <laughs> Paul Kirkland, gee, um, had uh, retired. He was, had announced that he was retiring. Paul was in bad health and they said, Jim Clausen, do you want to come to work for the bank and now? And, oh, uh, I had been a, a teller in training. That's where you got your your teeth sharpened mm -hmm. in the bank. And so I had, I think I had learned well. And they said, do you want the, the mortgage department job? Yeah, I'll take it. My dad had lived mortgages uh, all my life. He did a lot of lecturing at our dinner times at home. That was our family meeting mm -hmm. time. My sister was <laughs> bored to death. My mother said, oh no, here we go again. <laughs> but I listened and I learned a lot from dad. And uh, I ran the mortgage loan department in the bank for, well, I can't remember now seven years probably until I decided to give it up so <laughs> and then you went and, and managed and opened these two branches then after after the mortgage no, no the branches came before oh and they then you called me in gotcha to okay. replace the uh, okay guy oh so, so what made you leave the mortgage department <laughs> well you know I'll spring you from the bank yeah. I said, we're going to Colorado. Oh. <laughs> yeah, she said, you can come if you want to. No. <laughs> I said, well, okay, I well, want well, to. Well, we need to back up, too, and, and talk. So you guys got married in 51? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Yep. Uh -huh. Well, let's see. I guess that's about the we end of the story. Then I got out here, uh, got tired sitting around, and got a real estate license, peddled real estate for five years. Huh. Now, what brought you to Colorado? Why, what uh, prompted you to spring in from the bank and make you move to Colorado? Uh, I had hardly ever been out of Indiana or Muncie, period. Uh, always had a big itch to travel, go somewhere else. Of course, we had three children, so I was busy doing that. Mm -hmm. But when I saw a chance, we are back to our neighbors. Uh, he moved out here as controller, I think, of the ball plant the aerospace. In, uh, in West Watch. <laughs> you know, sub in Broomfield. Westminster. No. Oh, Broomfield. That's sure. It, yeah. yeah. We came out to visit them, and they had built a cabin up in oh. their Tabernash in the mountains, and there was snow, and it was postcard pretty. And, well, I know, before that, we came out... Um, 
we belonged to an airplane club. Oh yeah, in the Indianapolis. Little charter club that took trips. And there was a trip out to Colorado Springs. Yeah. And most of the people were going on to ski. They were going on to ask. But we um, did the tourist thing in Colorado Springs. This was in January, about the third week of January. Uh, people were walking down the streets of Colorado Springs in short sleeve <laughs> yeah. t-shirts. <laughs> and it was 70 degrees. Yeah, yeah. And Ann said, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so you moved out here in 1980 then? Yeah. Uh, and then... That's when you, you did real estate out here in Colorado? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. 81, I uh, took me all year. I had to go through three courses, then take the state exam, uh -huh. and I guess I passed. They gave me a license, and I went to work for one group. Uh, then shortly, that sales manager moved to another group, and he called me one day and he said, Hey, Clausen, can you have lunch with me today? I said, Heaven, Jess, if you're buying. He said, Sure, I'll buy. Okay, so I met him and he uh, offered me a job in the new agency, which was in North Fort Collins at that time and was a prosperous agency. And I was aware of them. And so, uh, and he had been an ex Army Colonel, I always enjoyed visiting with him, so uh, he kind of, uh, I guess, took me to raise, I guess you would say in the real estate business, uh, he had been sales manager, uh, I don't know how many, two at least, and uh, in that agency, unfortunately, a few years later, went bankrupt. Oh, the poor guy. Well, the market was... Oh, yeah. the market was awful. I didn't know it. <laughs> I was oblivious, I guess. Uh, I would work my prospects, and I enjoyed it thoroughly. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of driving, of course, yeah. and there were skinny periods. Uh, I guess that's part of the characteristics of real right. estate. And uh, when I got to uh, Social Security, I went down and applied, and the guy said, okay, you'll get your first check two months from today, or something like that. Yeah. I said, okay, and I went back and wrote my resignation, and I've been lazy ever since. Oh, good for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well well, let's talk then uh, about family. You see, you three kids, three children? Yes. Talk uh, grandchildren, great-grandchildren? We have five grandkids, all outstanding kids. I, am, I mean it, I think they are. All, mm -hmm. all five. Well, does that count, Corey? Uh -huh. Yes, it does. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. Our son, uh, our youngest, we brought him out here with us. He was uh, at a horrible transfer age of 13. Seventh grade, yeah. Yeah, and uh, he had a hard time, sure. but he learned life in the raw. He, I think he uh, learned to make friends at school. At his two schools, he uh, started at a junior high. Oh, can't think of the, the scouts. He got his eagle scout. Oh, yes. And uh, we no sooner got out here than uh, we uh, met a guy who said, Clausen, you ought to put Scotty in scouts. That's the best program I've ever found. And so I, he said, here's the name of the scoutmaster. So I, and that scout troop had just been written up nationally as one of the outstanding troops in the country. Wow. Goodness, yeah. And, uh, so, let's see. So I called the scoutmaster and he said, yeah, he said, we have a limit, but uh, we're up to our limit, but come on, bring your son anyhow. And uh, we went to a meeting and Scotty was enthralled. Scotty, it's, it's Scott. Yeah. He's, he's he grown now. treasurer, didn't you? 
What? Oh, yeah. I, oh, they needed a treasurer desperately. Well, I was in the bank. You're it. <laughs> okay, I was treasurer for several years. Oh, well, that was easy. <laughs> I remember one time in Muncie, I was treasurer of three organizations. That's that's enough to drive you bananas. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, this scout troop uh, was just wonderful, wonderful for our boy. He had been in Cub Scouts in Muncie, and uh, that's all it took. Uh, he seemed to get along better in school. I'm sure his attitude improved considerably. Mm -hmm. um, Scouts. Well, he finally ended up an eagle. I was so proud of oh, him. Sure. Oh, Absolutely. goodness. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, At the Presbyterian Church in the Explorer Troop that was housed in the, or, or had originated in the Presbyterian Church in downtown Fort Collins. This the, is uh, Scout Fort Troop that, that originally was at the church there on Stover. Oh, that was the. Uh, and scout troop, the oh, explorers were, were right. in yeah. the Presbyterian, yeah. Yeah. And gee, that was a wonderful group of fathers that, that ran that troop. I knew all of them, and uh, our son responded so well to scouting. <clears throat> and the fact that he made Explorer, I found that um, hard to believe. Yeah, and he now, he, he is a horseshoer, and he's, um, 40. I think he's gotten his journeyman license, I mean, so that he could go anywhere and shoe, but it's kind of half time because it's awfully hard on your body. And oh, sure. Early, mid, early to mid 40s. Um, so he and another man are just starting a Rocky Mountain Christian some kind of association that is uh, going to deal with hunting, archery, the spirituality of, you know, and the Christian attitude, etc. They're just getting, they have a web page, they're just getting that started. Oh, wonderful. And he also works with um, something like North Range Behavioral Outfit in Greeley. He deals with uh, young adults, teenagers who are See. having problems and yeah. who have okay. maybe been ordered by the court for one thing. Mm. But okay. What is his principal uh, subject? Oh boy. Minors in possession, MIP. Oh, okay. They are assigned to his classes or his wow. agency by the courts. And, so, uh, so then you need to move on to the other two children. Yeah. So oh, I just yeah. talked to Diney on the phone. That's her daughter. And she stayed in Muncie. She lives in Indiana. She stayed in Muncie. We yeah. thought she would come out here with us, but then she married a boy from Muncie. Yeah. And, and um, she is a talented musician. She had played the guitar for years, and all of a sudden, she decided she wanted to play the piano, and that's been just a few years ago. Yeah, and she's yeah. 53, I think. Yeah, so I know how to read music. I can play by the notes. So um, I sat down with her and showed her the notes, the counting, and she worked the whole time she was here on that, and then took off and plays by ear. Is that right? And entertained groups, and you know, just she can do something that I was never been able to do. Just. Ripple Mansion. up and down the keyboard, you know. Um, so that's Diney. Well, then she substitute teaches in the Muncie school yeah. system. Okay. Goodness gracious. And Andy is our... He's our oldest. He's 57, I think. Yeah, he is. 50. He I just figured a, it out. He's yes. an accountant. He worked for um, Outfit in Indianapolis. Huh? Oh, well, yeah. no, it started out as a CPA, but... Um, the outfit, some energy company moved him down to Texas and um, closed his group two weeks later after oh, he got moved. Oh, goodness, yes. <laughs> and he was on the street. Poor guy. 
and, and he got a job at and the Teddy reason, Corps. The reason, Teddy Co. Huh? The reason they moved down to Texas instead of just staying where they were because his wife, meanwhile, had gotten breast cancer, like age 40 or something, and um, so they had to stay on the insurance that the company offered. Oh. So he went through a period, but he survived it. It came through beautifully. He is now, um, he's probably on his fifth different job, but he is um, working for one of those outfits that stores stuff that's out there in the atmosphere, I say. Let's see. What's this? You know, what do you call it? Oh, like data storage stuff? Yeah. 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 Um, he's, he's, not a C, he's not a CFO, but he's uh, head of the North. American division or something. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. I get yeah. lost. Yeah. Anyway. Oh well, they've all done well then. That's the oh, they have. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. done well. Yeah. And it sounds like in retirement you guys have been active, uh, hiking and your painting and. Uh, oh yeah. 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 Oh, we started hiking when we moved out here. I just had always drove had up to Estes Park <laughs> enough to wear one car out when we lived in uh, Fort Collins. For eleven, so finally minutes? we moved yeah. up there in '93, and then oh we, yeah, then we moved up to Estes in '93, and that was wonderful. I had two golf groups. One had a regular tea time on Tuesday. The other one had a regular tea time on Thursday. We had two hiking groups, a a group that had just formed uh, as a private group. Then the Presbyterian Church up there sponsored a group that went on Friday. And so I had her, Annie, all, she had joined me. Um, we hiked on Monday and Friday, Tuesday and Thursday. I was out on the greens. Uh, we all had season tickets at the Lake Course wow. in Estes. And that was a barrel of fun. Sure. None of us were any good. <laughs> Nobody was the least bit professional, but we sure had a good time. How much of this life story do you want? Oh, it's it's for you guys. So I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, we could start to wind down the interview if you'd oh, like, okay. for, by all means. Yeah, is, okay. is there anything, uh, as we've sat here and talked, that I didn't ask you that you'd like to talk about? Any stories that have floated up since we've been? here that you'd like to talk about. So hopefully we've capped your story as best we can. Annie, I'll bring you into this. As you've listened in on this, is there anything that he said over the years that he's left out that you'd like him to talk about? Or or do you think we've covered everything? <coughs> I, I can't think of a thing we've <coughs> left out. There hasn't we, been that much. You know? <clears throat> um, I think what everything I've heard him talking about is probably stuff I have heard in yeah. bits and pieces. Okay. Uh, I, I, I just about heard what you heard, okay. I think. Okay. When we first got out here, we uh, spent a lot of time at Cameron Pass. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, cross-countryed up there really quite a lot wow. for old folks. And we got well acquainted up there with the territory. And we did that for about as long as we could hold up. Then we gave our cross-countries to the son in Pierce. Uh -huh. He was in, well, oh, huh. where? The town five miles north of Pierce. Oh, um, oh goodness. None. 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 Yeah. yeah, they were in none yeah. in a, a restored farmhouse. Oh, nice. That was yeah. just lovely. Yeah. Good. And oh. a family, <laughs> the uh, Barnaby family that was... Uh, well documented. Well, you don't need to go through all that. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, I just thought they were. He since has married a girl who was a superb gal. She's she's now in the accounting department of Poudre Valley Hospital. She's assigned at MCR out here in Loveland. And uh, well, let's see and. Andy's wife is in is I think is up at physical therapy department there in Atlanta. Oh yeah, and one of the major hospitals. Oops. And uh, Diana's husband is going to school to get a teacher's license. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. I'm just saying what the other kids Spouses. are doing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Sure. Yeah. 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 Oh. Okay, well. Yeah. Well, the, the last question I always like to ask uh, in these interviews is, how do you, that time you spent in, in the military, uh, the war years, how do you think, uh, did that play a role in your life, affect your life, change your life at all? Or do you just see it simply as a chapter of your life that you went through? How would you answer that? The latter, a yeah. chapter of a life that I had to tolerate. Yeah. I did not enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was nonsense. It was a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, here I had all this talent and it was being uh, repressed. God. And delayed. Yeah, yeah delay. Yeah. yeah. Leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, I guess that was the impression I uh, had when I came back. I didn't revere much from my service years. My uh, One of my grandsons took my sharpshooter medal, and his dad said, no, you shouldn't do that. And I said, oh, let him have it, Scott. He was, I don't want it. It's just laying around here. And uh, I've given them several things. In fact, that same grandson I gave my golf clubs to when I uh, decided I had, at the ripe old age of what, 80, I'm 86 now, it was fairly recently, though I didn't want to play anymore. But I still enjoy watching golf on TV. Yeah. And of course, Indiana is basketball crazy you know, Bobby Knight and yeah. all that clan, uh, I still follow the the uh, Nuggets, not the Pacers. They are too far uh, afield for me in Indianapolis. But uh, my son, who is in now in Atlanta, used to have season tickets to the Pacers in Indianapolis. He and his wife and kids lived in Noblesville, and you don't know where that yeah. is. It's north of Indianapolis, but it was close. So he has always enjoyed basketball. Yeah. And he and I will discuss basketball on the phone on long distance when we ought to be talking about family members. <laughs> but it, we at least each have that interest. Well, very good. And his son has been an athlete ever since he was a kid. He's played basketball, uh, baseball. Uh, two of the grandsons are oh, definitely athletically talented. I think his yeah. mother would not let him play football. Well, he didn't want to anyway, I don't think. We had a, or <laughs> had, we have a grandson who lived in Pierce. He is now living in Greeley, but uh, he was a sought-after football player. Uh, he got a concussion twice in high school, and uh, his mother, who was somewhat opinionated, said, no more football for you, Buster. You're going to have sports in other areas, but not football. And I admire her. She, well. she you really got the World War II yeah, yeah. stuff, yeah. And do you edit this at all? I will. Okay. Well, well, Jim, I want to uh, thank you for uh, sitting down to tell your story today, as well as I want to thank you for your service to our country. Thank, thank you. you. Goodness. Uh, this is the group at Omaha that, uh, after five months of schooling, we were considered uh, masters of communication. And they were sent around the, the world as replacements. A lot of them went to the Battle of the Bulge. And, uh, and that was that, that when you had the hernia and, and saved you from going oh, over, correct? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, goodness, yes. And where, where are you in this picture? I was just wondering. Uh, oh, right there. Hold on, I'm going to zero in. Right. I was kind of a nerdy looking guy, <laughs> at the, even at that date. Oh, well, I guess that's okay. Uh, most of them were 
my age or slightly older. But I enjoyed this group. Okay, this is one of our snow-covered Neeson huts in Camp Vale. And after a heavy snowstorm, which was a little unusual, oh, I don't remember a lot of snowstorms, just a lot of wind, okay? Uh, our first camp, boy, I have to get closer. It was just uh, up the hill from Grindavik, which was on the ocean front. We could see the ocean from our campsite. And my second move was to Keflavik. Uh, it was much larger and it shows the airport, you know, I don't remember. I just remember leaving the airport. I was pleased to be leaving Iceland. Oh, sure. And Reykjavik was, of course, the focal point and the uh, capital. And it was pretty decent town, really. But the island is somewhat large. So this is on the southwest part of the island, correct? Southwest, that's right, okay. yes. Greenland is over here. Okay. okay, this is a picture of me after I got discharged with Dad and uh, one with my mother in my uniform. They wanted me uh, to pose in my uniform, and there's one by myself. Okay, well... Uh,